YouTube and welcome to Musicology for the People. I'm your host Allison Kaufman and today I thought we would talk about the symphony. What is a symphony? I'm sure you've all heard of the term symphony in such varied conversations as Oh Charles, let's do go to the symphony this weekend. Hey, they're doing Beethoven's Ninth at Symphony Hall. Did you know that Brahms took 18 years to write his first symphony? Yeah, but what exactly is a symphony? Many say the symphony truly began with either Giovanni San Martini or Franz Haydn because they were both called the father of the symphony. And if they were both the fathers of the symphony, then they were one of the first modern families. But in actuality, the symphony can trace its roots all the way back to ancient Greece. The word symphony comes from the Greek word symphonia, which means an agreement or concord of sound. This word actually appeared in the Greek version of the Bible in the book of Daniel to describe the sound of an instrument that's most similar today to something like a bagpipe. In later Greek music theory writings, because they actually did do music theory writings in ancient Greece, Symphonia was used to describe a consonance, or when two notes sound good together. The opposite, of course, being dissonance. Consonance and dissonance. Good terms to know. In the Middle Ages, the word symphony was often tacked on to the name of musical instruments, namely those that could play more than one note at a time, therefore creating harmony or symphonia. It was used to name two-headed drums, hurdy-gurdies, and even dulcimers. From there, the word symphony began to appear in the title of musical pieces that had more than one note sounding at the same time, such as Giovanni Gabrielli's Sacrae Symphoniae or even Heinrich Schütz's Symphonie Sacre. See a pattern there? The 17th century was something of a free-for-all for the title symphony. Anything could be called a symphony, whether it was instrumental or vocal or had 50 instruments or two. Totally up to you! It wasn't until the 18th century that we get something called the Italian Symphony, which is most similar to something that we would recognize today. The Italian Symphony was used as something of an overture or entr'acte for an opera. It solidified into a form of three movements. A fast movement, a slow movement, and a final fast movement. Now the first father of the symphony, Giovanni San Martini, was born around 1700 in Milan, today obviously part of Italy, but at the time actually part of Austria. He and his brother Giuseppe both became composers, but Giovanni is known because he really experimented with the symphony. He removed it from its operatic position and changed it into its own genre. 67 symphonies that he wrote still survive today, which shows his mastery of his new genre. The other so-called father of the symphony was Franz Josef Haydn, a name you are far more likely to recognize. Haydn was younger than San Martini by about 30 years, and San Martini's influence is very prevalent in Haydn's style, even though Haydn himself was virulently against the idea that San Martini had any influence in his style. While Haydn might not be the first composer to really work with the symphony, he did make several significant contributions. First, and most importantly, he expanded the symphony into four movements. The first movement was an opening sonata, or allegro. The second was a slow movement, usually called an adagio. Then came a minuet or scherzo with a trio, and it was ended with an allegro or rondo or another sonata. While this was the general outline, middle movements were sometimes switched around, and quite often there was a slow introduction added to the first movement. Another significant contribution Haydn made to the symphony was by expanding its length quite dramatically. The average length of San Martini's symphonies was usually around 10 minutes, usually much shorter than 10 minutes. However, the average length of a Haydn symphony, especially towards the end of his compositional life, was around 25 minutes. Therefore, Haydn symphonies are far more substantial than San Martini's. However, despite the longer duration of these symphonies, Haydn managed to churn out 106 surviving symphonies. That's only the surviving ones. There are probably a lot more that didn't survive. Haydn student Mozart also carried on his style of symphony, composing 68 himself. The symphony really took off though in the 19th century with the founding of professional orchestras. Previously, most orchestras were privately funded by the aristocracy, and therefore the only people allowed to go to these orchestra performances were other members of the aristocracy. In the 19th century, publicly funded orchestras began to be founded, and they were able to give concerts for the public to attend. And because these orchestras were pretty much all instrumentalists, 
the symphony became a major genre for their performances. Beethoven began the next big development in the symphony, further expanding the length of each movement, and finally, with his ninth symphony having a symphony that lasted for an hour and 15 minutes. The last movement alone is longer than most of Haydn's full symphonies, clocking in at about a half an hour. He also added a choir to the last movement, allowing for vocal performances to be involved in a typically and previously instrumental genre. He also upped the ante on how many musicians were to be used in these performances. For the premiere of his Ninth Symphony, there was actually no orchestra available that was large enough to suit the needs for the piece. So he used two different orchestras and also invited many other amateur musicians to flesh out the numbers. In the 20th century, Gustav Mahler also expanded both the size and length of the symphony. In fact, his 8th symphony is so large that it's known as the Symphony of a Thousand, basically because that's kind of the number of people that are required to perform it. The definition of a symphony also begins to get wishy-washy. While many composers still use the traditional four-movement instrumental definition, there are many other composers that completely throw that away. Some symphonies have as many movements as 24, or as few as one. Also, some symphonies are now being written for big band concerts and also for small ensembles. So back to the original question, what is a symphony? As you can see, there is no real answer. But if you can figure out when it was written, it might give you a good idea of what you're about to be listening to. Whether it's a 10 minute, small ensemble piece, or an hour and a half work for about a thousand people. Well, I hope you learned something new and interesting about the symphony. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and also check out the Facebook and Twitter accounts associated with this channel. Until next week, enjoy some concordances of sound. Music